fourth graders, welcome to Science with Mrs. Olson. Here we are in my kitchen today to talk about energy. But before we do that, we're going to have a visit by Discovery Dan. Welcome back to another exciting week of Science Studies Weekly. This week, we're learning about energy. That's right! Solar energy, sound energy, nuclear energy, mechanical energy, and... What are you doing? I'm making another form of energy. Electricity. Yes, electrical energy, chemical energy, th there are so many types of energy, but there is not a lot of energy in static electricity. Oh, really? Ugh, come to the dark side. So, to recap, oh. <laughs> energy, oh. this uh, could be a problem if this keeps happening a little too much energy. Uh, anyway, have a great week. Oh. Dang it, awesome. <laughs> you guys, you guys stay awesome. That means you. Oh. Okay, so what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. So whether you're cutting the grass or swinging on the swings or turning on a light bulb or starting the lawnmower, you need energy to make it work. That's what makes things work is energy. Albert Einstein said that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Hmm, that's a lot to think about, but I'm going to save that for your middle school and high school teachers. They'll talk about them when you get older. In our Science Weekly magazine this week, you might have read about different kinds of energy. Solar energy is energy that we get from the sun. When sun's energy travels through space and comes to earth and comes as light and heat, light energy and sound energy are kinds of energy, nuclear energy is energy that is created when atoms are split. Create, when they split apart, they create lots of energy. Electrical energy, we're all familiar with electricity and what that can do for us. We're gonna study that more next week. Mechanical energy is the energy of motion. Chemical energy is the energy that's created when things burn. It's also created when you use things just like batteries. Energy can be divided into two different kinds of energy, renewable and non-renewable energy. Renewable energy is energy that can be reproduced or recreated in our environment inside of our lifetime. Things like wind energy, solar energy, hydroelectric energy, which is using running water to create electricity, are renewable resources. They'll come back in our lifetime. Non-renewable resources or non-renewable energy are things like using uh, natural gas or oil or coal to produce energy. And those things, once we take them out of the ground, they're out of the ground for good. We can't grow them again. We can't plant them and wait for them to come back. They won't come back in our lifetime. So we say that they're non-renewable types of energy. Today, we're focusing on lots of renewable energy because we want to save our resources for future generations. So we're trying to use more solar energy, wind energy, and, and hydro energy in our environment. Non-renewable resources like coal and oil and natural gas are also what's called fossil fuels. They were created from fossils or the remains of once living plants and animals that have been dead or gone for many, 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 many years. So we're not gonna get them back again. And um, so we wanna be really careful about how we use them. Today, we wanna spend a little bit of time here in my kitchen talking about heat energy. And heat is a kind of energy that moves or transfers. I don't think we think about it a lot, but we use lots of heat here in the Copper Country. We really need it in the winter time to stay warm. So let's think just for a few minutes today about how heat moves. 
If you are outside in that beautiful sunshine this afternoon and you face the sun, what do you feel? Do you feel warmth? That's because the energy from the sun travels through space and comes into our atmosphere. And when it comes into the atmosphere, it comes to earth as heat and light. And when you stand there, you feel that warmth from the sun and it feels so wonderful. That heat transfer is called radiation. When heat travels from a warm object to something cooler through the air, we say that that's radiation. Another kind of heat transfer is called conduction. And we're gonna take a walk over here to my stove to take a look at a demonstration of this. Here I have my stove and I'm gonna turn on this burner here. And I guess you can say that this is a kind of radiation because we have the hot burner heating up or the heat passes through the air underneath the pan to the bottom of this frying pan. It's gonna warm up the frying pan. So that's radiation at work. But now this frying pan is gonna get really warm. And since it's nearly dinner time, I thought I would feed Mr. Olson a hamburger for dinner. Well, I took this cold frozen hamburger out of the freezer and I'm going to put it into this frying pan. Notice that the hamburger is touching the warm pan. This is called conduction. So the pan is going to get warm on the bottom from the flame and, and the air around it, and then it's going to warm up this cold hamburger. The cold burger is touching the warm pan, and we call that conduction. We're just going to let that cook for a while. Matter of fact, we're going to put this little splatter guard over here so it doesn't splatter grease all over my clean stove. So, so far we have radiation where heat travels through the air, and then we have conduction where something cold is touching something hot, and the heat transfers, remember we always said, heat transfers from something warm to something cold, and it's gonna warm up that hamburger. We call that conduction. The third kind of heat transfer is called convection. And here you can see my daughter Lindsay's lava lamp. She left this here when she moved away to college and now it's my science tool. Well, this shows perfectly what we call convection. You can see that this purple goo inside of the lava lamp has warmed up. There's a light bulb down here. And this made this purple glue goo sort of liquidy and as it gets warm it rises up to the top let's watch this happen and as it rises it cools and after it gets to a certain point of cooling then it starts to drop all over again oh, down it goes and when it gets to the bottom it's going to stay there until it gets warm again where it start when it starts to rise up to the top. And when we have this rising of warm ooze and the dropping of cool ooze, we call that a convection current. That also can happen in your kitchen at home when your mom boils a pot of water. You probably have noticed that if you put a pot of water on the stove, that the water begins to boil, the bubbles rise up, and what happens is, is that water gets cool as it comes to the top, meets the air, and it drops down again and gets warm. We, get, we call this convection. We're just gonna hang on one second while I turn down Mr. Olson's hamburger, because we have lots of good conduction going on over here. All right, so let's do a quick review. So energy, we know, is the ability to do work. Radiation is the movement of heat away from the heated object, like the sun or even a campfire. Did you ever stand like sort of near the campfire and hold out your hands and your hands get warm? That's because that heat is radiating away from the fire over to your hands and warming you up. 
Conduction is heat was transferred from a hot object to a cold object when they touch, just like the cold hamburger on the hot frying pan. You can hear it sizzling away over there. And convection happens when warm particles, hold on, Had the smoke alarm go off. There's a lot of science going on in here. Convection happens when the warm particles rise up and get cool and sink down and get warm again and then you have that convection current happening. Well before I wrap up for today let's take a look at the back of our Science Weekly magazine and I'm going to read a clue and I want you to tell me whether the answer is radiation, conduction, or convection. Here we go. Ready? So it says you and your dad put a pot of hot water, a pot of water on the stove. The burner is on and the water has started to boil. What is this an example of? Is it con radiation, conduction, or convection? Well, it's what? Convection, right? Because the warm particles are rising, getting cool, and dropping to the bottom and warming up again. And then there's a circulation of warm and cool particles. Good. Let's take a look at the next one. You just got a cool glitter gl lamp. When you turn on the lamp, all the glitter is on the bottom. After a few minutes, the glitter starts to rise again in the lamp and fall back down, only to rise back up again. Hmm, does that sound familiar to you? Is it radiation, conduction, or convection? What do you think? Did you say convection? Right, because the warm glitter was rising up and the cool glitter was sinking back down. So we have conduction again. Let's look at number three. Aunt Marie and Uncle Ed invite you on a camping trip. The weather is chilly, so Uncle Ed lights a campfire. All you feel, you sorry, all of you feel much warmer around the campfire. So is that radiation, conduction, or convection? What do you think? Did you say radiation? Well, I think you're right, because the heat is moving away from the fire through the air and warming up your hands on that cool night. Okay, number four. When you go for your checkup, the nurse says that you need a tetanus shot. Everybody loves that. She wipes your arm with alcohol. No one dried it off the alcohol, but it's gone from your arm. What happened? Huh. So she wipes that alcohol on your arm, and then all of a sudden it vanishes. It's gone. Is that radiation, conduction, or is it convection? Hmm. Did you say conduction? If you said conduction, you're right, because you had the cool alcohol on your warm arm, and that heat transferred from your body into that alcohol, warmed up the alcohol, and the alcohol evaporated. Sort of like magic, but it's not magic, it's science. And we're gonna skip number five. Number six, you wore your dark t-shirt in PE class, that's physical education or gym, we call it, and got overheated. Coach reminds you to wear your cooler white uniform shirt for class tomorrow. How does the heat reach you and your shirt outside? Hmm, is that radiation, conduction, or convection? Huh. Well, if you said radiation, you're right, because the movement, the, the energy moved from the sun through space and came to you in the Earth's atmosphere and, and was absorbed by that dark shirt that you had on, and that's why you're really sweaty. So you're going to wear that white shirt tomorrow so that the light reflects off of that shirt, right, instead of being absorbed. Okay, so just as a quick review, there's lots of different kinds of energy, and energy is the ability to do work. We talked about renewable and non-renewable resources. We talked about fossil fuels, things like coal and oil and natural gas that are formed from fossils many, many years ago. 
And we talked about how heat, which is another kind of energy, is transferred. It's transferred through radiation through the air to you. By conduction, when something hot touches something cold and the heat transfers from the hot object to the cold object because they're touching. And then convection, when warm things in a closed system rise and they get cool and then they drop back down to the source of heat and they create a convection current. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about energy today and how energy transfers. Have a great week. Don't forget to read your Science Weekly. You can go back and do this exercise on your own if you want to. Watch the videos on Discovery Education. And when you're out in the sun the next time, just enjoy that radiation from the sun. Always wear sunscreen, though. But that's for another video. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.